We had kind of a rough patch, I feel like, for 10 or so years. After the early 2000s, it was awesome when it comes to gaming. And then, ugh, for the kind of pretty good, you know, here and there. But 2022 and 2023 have been ridiculously good. So if you're someone who still has like a 1080 or a, an older card like that, it might be time to upgrade because there's a lot of crazy games. Phantom Liberty just came out. That's the latest Cyberpunk DLC. And they fixed so many issues with Cyberpunk. I've been talking to people who have older GPUs. They've been having trouble playing that. I've been having trouble playing Baldur's Gate 3 and, and Star field and there's just a lot of reasons why you may want to upgrade right now now if you don't need an upgrade you know you're running pretty good don't watch this video and let me influence you to like go and buy stuff that you shouldn't be buying remember one thing the rule is it's not about the hardware it's about the software because the hardware is just the thing to get you to the thing which are which is the games and stuff anyway what we're going to do here is put together a system that's around 800 dollars and this will let you play all these modern games at 1080p and 1440p, some of them at 4K at high settings or higher, usually well over 60 FPS. This is where I've been getting my Windows keys for the last couple of years, right here on whokeys.com. They're my longtime sponsor as well, so thanks for that. The difference is this is an OEM key, so it's tied to the hardware, but you'd have to buy this 10 or 12 times to make it equal the cost of retail. The other difference is you'll be doing your own tech support here because you don't get the Microsoft tech support, but we're building a system, and I don't think any of us have ever used Microsoft's tech support, so that's why I like to use whokeys.com. Now, they're having a back-to-school special, so these prices are even lower than what you see on the screen for Windows 10 Pro. We also have Home, uh, Windows 11. We have Office 2021, 2019, and 2016 here. I always recommend grabbing a copy of Windows 10 Pro. So you get 20% off of the back-to-school special, but if you use my coupon code TS25, you'll get 25% off. Putting in coupon code TS25, click apply, and then watch these prices come down. Wonderful. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on my purchase orders, just view keys and codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit start, type activate, click on activation settings, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. You know, I never liked how Microsoft has different prices for different people. If you're a home user, you're gonna pay 10 times more than an OEM builder or a corporation or something like that. And that's why I like heading to places like whokeys.com to get the OEM keys so I can pay a price that makes sense. So thanks to them for sponsoring and now to our regularly scheduled program. The first part of this video, we're gonna talk about like components to build a system for all these crazy games that are coming out. At the end of all that, we'll talk about Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty, and I'm actually gonna go into the game and walk through every single setting in the graphics and the video and a few of the other gameplay settings to just talk about what they do and which ones you can turn up or down to like get the best performance at the highest quality. So that's the goal is to get really good performance, but also high quality and not just turning things on and off randomly. start with the graphics card you know if you have a decent system already just get the graphics card first and then see how much you need and if you need you're like yeah, okay it's still not fast enough then go ahead and get the whole system let's jump in and take a look at some of these prices we've got everything coming down right now the i5 12400f now the f stands for no graphics <laughs> Graphics? What is the F? I don't know. So this is just the processor without any graphics. Plenty of cores. They don't have, like, if you get the, the fancier version of this, like the i7, you're going to get those extra low power cores. But for a lot of people, if you're gaming, it's like going to see almost no difference. It's very similar in performance to the i7 and a fraction of the cost. So I would pair that with this MSI B760M Pro. Now, we're not going to be doing too much overclocking with this. As you can see, there's not a huge amount of stuff going on with the VREGs. We're not delivering as much power as we used to, but you know, 65 watt part. So, but still, it's it's gonna do a hell of a job. And then we have M.2 slots here, uh, one above and one below. So the one below does not have a heat spreader on it. So just put your slower one there if you're gonna get two and your faster one up here. And we have a couple more expansions, you know, on the bottom. Check that out, my favorite PS2, just chilling right there on the back. And we're not gonna be using any of those outputs on the top, like the VGA and the, the HDMI and the, and the display port because we're gonna be using dedicated graphics, but we have all that. All right, and USB-C, it's 3.2, I think Gen, yeah, it's USB 3.2 Gen 2 on this one. So this one's loaded and I'm gonna give you a less expensive option too. So just, just hold on, which is gonna be the Ryzen. So if you don't wanna go with the Intel and you wanna save a little bit of money and it's literally like a few percent faster, like the Intel is a couple percent faster than than the uh, the AMD, but the AMD is a little bit cheaper. So let me talk about this AMD really quick. 
the thing is is that the motherboards are usually a little bit cheaper so it's like do you want to spend an extra 30 bucks probably get the intel but if you want to save the 30 bucks and maybe shift that over into a better cooling unit or a, a better graphics card they're, they're so similar in performance and then if you if you you know if you want to be fanboy and and do red team blue team this is the time to do it because they're so similar in performance intel's a little bit faster like two or three percent maybe at the most so anyway um, i want to say something about this a lot of times people will go online and they'll see the uh, the, the ryzen 5 5600 and then you'll look around and you'll see there's a 5600g see that let me show you something this 5600g if you look at it you're gonna think oh my it's like the same thing look it's the same thing six cores 12 threads uh 4.4 max boost there you go that's like the same thing but it's 116 why is it so cheap 19 megabytes of cash people don't talk about cash enough we don't talk about cash this one's got more cash where's it where's it show come on now come on now show me that cash yeah make with the cash see there we had to go down to the <laughs> and put it in the comments <laughs> the the it's got like double the cash it's such a big deal they put 19 megabytes almost double but yeah it's a big deal having extra cash is a huge deal it's almost like having extra frequency that's how important cash is so this is going to be a substantially better cpu this one is a budget cpu that is great if you want integrated graphics and, a, and you know like all in one package and you just want to save a lot of money not gonna be playing too many AAA games with it so that's why i recommend this one just a little bit more money you know maybe a little a lot more money but it's that extra cash is, is a big deal and we need like people making videos talking about you know frequency is great but we need to be talking about cash too because you'll see these xeons that have lower frequency and absurd amounts of cash and they're just so fast when it comes to just processing tons of things at the same time there's a reason that they have all that cash okay i've talked enough about this let's move on for the motherboard we have a couple different options here there we go this one this is the one if you just want to plug it in and have it go uh, this is the asrock a520m not a lot of bells and whistles you're getting more bells and whistles with the intel for a little bit extra money so if you're just going to be using one m.2 this is an okay way to go I'm not extremely excited about this, but it does the job. It's going to be fast. It's going to work. Um, where's the ins and outs on the back? There we go. Not much going on there. You got your 3.2 uh, Gen 1. So again, the Intel is a little bit better in this regard too. Uh, the other option is this, but you'll, you might need to update the BIOS in order to make it work with that. So if you're willing to take that risk and you know what you're doing and you know how to update these bios this one might be a little bit better but some people in the comments down here said that it came with a new bios and i just don't want to guarantee it in the video you know because i don't know now for the graphics card it's finally time to talk about this this graphics card for, because this is why the price that's what you should be paying for this or less now the 4060 Ti, yeah, it's, it was kind of laughable when it came out, but at this price, it's it's fast. It needs more RAM, but at this price, it's fast. So yeah, I mean, if you want a 4070, let me give you a couple other options. Let's see what 4070s, they're gonna jump up in price. Uh, the other one is a 3080. So you're jumping up in price. That's that's a stupid low price. This is a stupid low price for that. Uh, the last option is maybe check eBay because I would rather have a 3080 than a 4060 Ti or even a 3070 it would be similar in performance. So check eBay for those first if you're comfortable with do, you know, doing that. Make sure you find a, a seller on there that has a really good track record and you'll be okay. But if not, and I've used these Zotec products before, I haven't used this exact one, but yeah. We can't forget that you're going to need mouse and keyboard. So put them on sale for 30% off. Coupon code uh, Halloweener Dog. I hope I remember that. It's all one word Halloweener Dog why i don't know I, I don't it's everything keyboard too i said bye all right next up we need some ram this is extremely inexpensive these days because we're using ddr4 for both of these systems if you're just going to be doing a lot of gaming 16 gigabytes is where you should start uh, and 3200 is also where you should start if you want faster pay a little more money you're willing to do that by all means but uh, for a lot of people 50 bucks for uh 32 gigabytes you get two of the uh, 16 gigabyte sticks that's kind of where you should be because you'll be able to do a lot of multitasking and just 
a lot of stuff in general and it's 50 bucks your choice though i mean if you're not doing a, a you know, ridiculous amount of overtasking not doing like 3d design or anything then you won't need too much ram it's not that important in game uh, generally the speed of the ram is a little more important but overall i'd rather put my money into the graphics card because that matters more than the than the ram ram is just like an extra thing you know if you want if you got extra money increase the speed of your ram so i think the cast latency on this one's pretty low too uh, where does it say does it even say i think it's i don't remember it's yes, 16 yeah cast latency is 16 so that's pretty good as well for the hard drive the price on these western digital black one terabyte drives is really good like you get one terabyte 50 bucks and uh these are up to 5150 megabytes a second they're gen 4 by 4 now you get 100 bucks you get a two terabyte drive so you know what i might do is i might get it depends on how much money you have and what you want to spend i might get uh, two of these anyway you can get one of these populated in both slots have one for your os and programs and the other one just for games and hentai all right power supply it's important to have 80 plus that's the main thing 80 plus gold is great but you want good power if you are cheaping out on your power supply well you're putting all of those expensive components in danger so never cheap out on your power supply never ever buy from a brand you don't know that's 29 dollars 800 watts and doesn't say 80 plus no 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 so this gigabyte is, is a good deal i'm trying to find you a good deal even though i'm telling you not to cheap out Trying to find you a good deal on a good part that's 80 plus gold certified and this one also is modular so that's a lot of stuff 850 is going to be fine if you get a bigger graphic card or want future you know expandability thousand watt might be pretty expensive but not too bad all right now for the case again we're on a budget here so i for the for budget cases i really like what deep cool does and you know this i'm going to say this reminds me of like an nzxt but at a much lower price um and i've liked what deep cool's been doing over the over the years got room in there for fans got room in there for plenty of radiators if you wanted to do all that stuff got a hard drive shroud on the bottom it's sleek and you got the window on the side it's the tempered glass side panel all for 49 dollars. so you have a lot of stuff going on here for 49 dollars. micro atx by the way and mini itx only and another option if you want something that's just a little bit sleeker still has some airflow but you know maybe not quite as much then and it's also 10 bucks cheaper this thermal tank is not bad either right, so there you have it that's what i would put together if i was like right now building a gaming computer um now that we've got you know black friday and stuff coming up in a month or so you might want to just start thinking about some of these parts and what i usually do for black friday i'll make a video on black friday when it's a little closer but i get my list like now I start looking at stuff and start making up my mind and doing my research and then I put the things that I need on my list and I wait for Black Friday Cyber Monday and I just see what's on sale sometimes you'll see people doing like oh a week early sale of for Black Friday and then you can grab some of this stuff early but if you're gonna be upgrading your gaming rig and you want to play the games that are out now and some of the ones that are coming out in the future officially I'm recommending the Intel for this Now, when you're uh, when you're going into cyberpunk and stuff it says right here on the bottom please note that mods will not work or may not work so they've they've turned off the mods here and i'm just going to wait until like a lot of the mods get updated but right now i'm just going to show you a couple um, that we can talk about turning on and off so you have your dlss and also your amd dynamic resolution scaling you can choose which one you want to use the dlss generally looks a little bit better they're both going to have similar performance so and then what i usually like to do is put this on depending on what you're using you can put on a performance if you're if you know your gpu is a little bit slower but for like a 4060 ti you can just put it on quality and you should be good to go then mess with the the sharpness until you get it where you like it you can try dlaa dlaa is like the next thing it's deep learning anti-aliasing but this one does look a little bit sharper now one of the things that i've done in the past is put this on quality and just turn this sharpness down and then use uh, additional sharpness. You can do it in the INI files. You can turn on, because the, the AMD fidelity sharpening, or the, the cast sharpening is actually a little bit better, in my opinion, than the DLSS sharpness. Or another way to do this is if you're using reshade, well, you can just, you know, use the reshade effects for AMD cast sharpening, 
but I'll do that in another video. Right now, I'm just gonna put that up a little bit. All right, down to your field of view and stuff. This is all up to you. I keep my chromatic aberration off. Now, what is chromatic aberration? It's an artifact that goes like, it's like the purple thing you see uh, as a fringe around highlighted objects or objects that are backlit. And I don't like it. It makes me feel like I'm using a cheap lens on my eyeballs. So I keep it off. Depth of field is up to you. It's the blurry background. And you know, when you're focused on a character, lens flares I keep off because my eyes are not lenses and I don't really see the flares. I like some things like film grain. I do like that, just it's an effect I like, subjective. But um, your eyes note, your eyes do see grain in very low light conditions. All right, motion blur, I don't use that nonsense. All right, so contact shadows. If you turn some of these shadows off, it looks a little bit weird. So mess with these um, if you're having like shadows. Yeah, you can turn them down, but uh, yeah, local shadow mesh quality. I keep that on high unless I have to turn it down. But the cascade shadows, uh, you can turn down the medium without losing too much. And that's just the shadows that are cast by the sun. So those are dynamic. So I keep those on medium and it's not too big of a deal. Turning this on and off, you may notice a slight difference in your frame rate, but see how it looks in the game and see what you think. I'm not really willing to, uh, to turn this down. I love volumetric fog. Clouds, uh, whatever. Maximum decals, you can put that on medium. Now this will get rid of some of the grit and grime in the world, some of that stuff, but yeah. Screen space reflections. Now this is just the world and the light reacting all around the scene. If you need to turn that down to medium, give it a try. I like it on high because it makes everything, I just, Cyberpunk needs all these screen, screen space reflections. Subsurface scattering quality. Now this is mainly on human skin and we're doing a lot of talking, a lot of close-ups and there's a lot of like character in this game. So I keep this on high unless I have to turn it down. Ambient occlusion, shadow, it tells you over there on the side. It's like your, your shadows, but like the depth of the shadows. I don't know, it's like, it, it's, well, you can read that and have it explained. Uh, this doesn't really affect the stuff that much. Level of detail, if you're having trouble, turn that down to medium. Crowd density, turn that down to low if you're running a, you know, like a low spec machine. And then ray tracing, I'm gonna keep it off. And one other thing I wanna show you here, under the uh, gameplay, I believe it is, we have the different hard drive modes. You can turn this off if you have a fast hard drive and uh, turn this back on if you have a slow hard drive. It'll cut down on some of the stuttering. So leaving it on auto is probably the smartest thing to do. If you're using an AMD CPU, you'll also have this option here. I like to turn this on on my AMD CPUs. On uses all your logical cores, or you can, if you put it off, it just uses your physical cores. So if you have an eight core 16 thread, it'll just use the eight cores. So you can try both of these and see which one works better for you. Now I'm running on a pretty low spec mode right now, and I'm running on a 3060 Ti. I haven't upgraded to that 4060 Ti. There's a lot of stuff. I forgot how much stuff is on the screen. I have all my mods turned off right now, but in a couple of weeks, I'll be doing a video showing you how to mod this. We're gonna clean up this UI, uh, make the game look and run even better than it does now, but we're gonna add a bunch of cool stuff too. But so far, I'm really liking what's going on with the um, Phantom Liberty. I really like some of the changes they've made in Cyberpunk 2.0. This is obviously the game it should have been when it first came out. I think the game was good when it came out, but obviously was in beta. I mean, it was a very good beta in my opinion. I thought it was already better than Witcher 3, but that's my opinion. It does suffer from, I feel like, some of the modern RPG tropes where they're constantly trying to pull you into various points of interest all over the place, and it's just like ADHD in all directions. I feel like that kind of spoils some of the uh, organic exploration. But, you know, there's mods we can turn that off too. In a couple weeks, I'll make another video and we will talk about some of the mods. But right now we're waiting for the mods to be updated for Cyberpunk 2.0 and Phantom Liberty. So once that's done, then it'll be time to, to jump back in and, and mod this. I'll show you how modding works with this. So don't worry, it's coming soon. But right now is not the time to be modding Phantom Liberty. You can do a few basic mods, but let's just say that like anything can work, but it can also break. So I'm actually gonna wait and come back to this in a couple weeks and make some content for everybody, because I do like this game quite a bit and Phantom Liberty so far from just running around is like just a little few changes they've made. I'm like, yep, this is what it should have been all along. It went from being a good game to a great game, so. We'll see what my full thoughts are soon. Anyway, 
Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. And uh, let me know if you're playing this, and let me know if you're upgrading your PC. See you in the comments. There you... Jesus, my hair. Get my hair!